What's a book I've read recently that I would recommend? So, take off slace. Slave. Uh, I see, cool. Take off slave stuff. Or get arrested again. Gotcha. Okay, cool. So, the slave stuff has been removed. And I can go through the gate. So, I'm going to be, like, really basic and say that I read uh, Atomic Habits because I saw that YouTube video that everyone else saw about Atomic Habits. And, of course, obviously... I want to be followed, Ryuku. I'm following you now. Of course, I saw that video about Atomic Habits that everyone else saw, and I, I read it, and it was a pretty good book. Apart from that, oh, I'm not someone that doesn't read, obviously. Reading is great. But unfortunately, I don't have a hell of a lot of free time to sit down and just thumb through a book. It's difficult for me to find a lot of time to be able to read as much as I would like to. I say that I mostly read too much Reddit, or watch too many uh, long YouTube videos. Like earlier, I watched that YouTube video of a guy making a perfectly pure cookie. Did anyone else watch the perfectly pure cookie video? We should have definitely watched the perfectly pure cookie video. Thank you, FC. We all saw the perfectly pure cookie video. You know what I'd love? I genuinely love this is... Okay, so I'm going to go back a bit in a couple of years now. If you were a 90s kid or a late 80s kid or something like that, I mean, 70s as well if you want to, even the early 2000s, we didn't have a hell of a lot of TV channels. There wasn't a lot of choice about what to watch on TV. You don't have a massive amount of cable and internet and Netflix and stuff. So we had physical actual magazines of when TV shows were on. You'd have to be there at 7 o'clock, sat down in front of the TV, and you would shout to someone, you know, it's on. They'd be like, oh, I'm going to go and run quickly to the toilet really quickly and be like, no, it's on. The show's on right now. And we'd all sit down to watch it. Simpsons at six o'clock. Um, some was it uh, Hercules and Xena at seven o'clock after that. Things on eight. You'd all sit down and watch it. What we have lost with the... <laughs> everyone in the game's like, yeah, it'll be some time. It's, you've lost me for a bit. It's okay. I'll make this one quick. What we lost when we moved away from set time TV into on-demand TV and Netflix and YouTube. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing that we've lost this, but we lost that sense of community that everyone experienced something at the same time. There is a lovely, there's a beauty, there's a magnificence in the collective experience of an event at the same time. It's like going to the cinema. It's like it's why I premiere my videos on YouTube. There is a beautiful camaraderie, a community, if you will, of everyone experiencing something together. And when TV moved to being on demand, we lost that for everyone sitting down at seven o'clock. Remember when Game of Thrones was like the biggest thing in the world forever, and people would actively wait for the next episode to be released. And then you'd come into work or school or college or friendship groups or wherever you were, you'd be like, oh my God. Did you see Game of Thrones? Everyone talks about it as soon as it releases. I suppose live sports are still doing this in a way. What I love about YouTube, especially when the trending stuff happens for good videos, not trending crap videos, is you say, oh my God, did you see this? And people are like, oh my God, yes, I did. Everyone saw that. As soon as a new video comes out, everyone sees that. I mean, I chat to people, oh, did you see the new Summoning Salt video? Did you see the new video from this person, from that person, from the other? Did you see this... What was it was I watched uh, there's been a new skip discovered in Final Fantasy X. So, of course, I watched all the way through that. There was uh, another video made by uh, Dan Olson, the same guy that made um, Line Go Up. He made about the the metaverse is a dead mall, all that kind of stuff. What I very much love is when there is an event show, almost like this is like Eurovision. You know, Eurovision is, again, it's silly, but... Everyone sits down and watches it together, and everyone has, like, a Eurovision party. Yes, on-demand content is fantastic for consuming the content whenever you want to consume it, but what a lot of people forget, and this is my absolute area of expertise, this is my area of study for years and years and years, it's not just the content that matters. It's the community experience of the content. It doesn't... You don't just judge off the art itself. You can sometimes have a greater experience by taking into account the entire event that you're involved in around the art. And this entire study, this area of studying the human experience of the event, that's called phenomenology. And that was my entire focus for uni, and I still think it's very important. 
why why are we all so, why are we all playing RuneScape right now? Why are we all just talking about this crap stuff? <laughs> good point. It, there is a, it's a good point there's no desert heat in here, otherwise we would all be dead. Uh, we could experience the quest at the same time. Man's just reading us his bachelor's thesis. I can do that. I can get that for you. It's not a problem. Okay. But how can you have a community experience watching a movie if nobody talks to each other while watching the movie? Have you ever found that you laugh at comedy more when you're watching comedy with someone that you like who also likes that comedy? You ever sat down to watch a Netflix special or watch your favourite comedian and you just play it on and they, they say something really funny and you're just like... <laughs> you do that on exhale from your nose. You, you, you imitate a bull just briefly. But then you get your mates around, you sit there, you watch it all together. Don't teleport me to Camelot. Why are we going to Camelot? Don't you find that when you're experiencing an action movie or a comedy movie, you appreciate it more when you're watching it with people? There's, there is a love and appreciation to be found within a collective experience of something. You laugh much, much more when you're watching something you found funny with other people. And it's true. Yeah, people laugh at different parts. You laugh so much. It's like, I, um... I say, you know, if you show someone something on your phone that you find really funny and they watch it stony face and they're like, yeah, that's hilarious. I'm like, well, could you let me know? Could you laugh, maybe, at it? Ah, oh, that's why I added Josh's videos to the curriculum instead of watching them. Good, you should do. Every classroom ever should be forced to watch all of my videos ever.